Good evening friends, this is Jagdish Ahuja, ex-president Bangalore Stock Exchange and today I'm going to be talking to you about some provisions in the union budget which you know were very very nice or you know which definitely provoked some amount of interest from me and one of those which provoked interest where you know I could see killing more than one bird with one you know stone, it could be five birds with one stone, literally has been the millet. So yeah. the politics of millet or the millet story. That's what I would like to talk to you and tell, inform you about the nuances of the budget, how it's going to affect it. So, as you already know, the millet story, millet has been coined as Sri Anna or Sri Anna is sacred, sacred grain. Anna means grain. So, they, they, it has been elevated. The humble millet has been elevated to such a great uh, grain and that is also by the Honorable Finance Minister. Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman. And why is that so? It's because India is the world's largest producer of millets. And imagine being the world's largest producer and we don't you know, consume it that, to that great extent. Why? I mean, we should understand one thing. There is magic in millets. It helps to lower your, you know, uh, protect you by increasing your immunity and metabolism. Helps to, you know, lower your weight and, you know, helps you in your natural weight loss. Helps in lowering blood cholesterol. Protects bone and mental health. Helps in relieving menstrual cramps for women. And good for what? The heart and the head. So, that's how good it is. Apart from that, it detoxifies your body, reduces blood pressure, helps in preventing diabetes. We'll come to more on that and, you know, optimizing your kidney and liver. Yeah. And definitely helps in eliminating constipation and bloating problems. Why? Because millet has that unique element of having fiber. The carbohydrate to fiber ratio is low. That means in paddy rice, for example, you know, you the ratio is 78.2 carbon to fiber, whereas uh, carbohydrates to fiber, sorry. And whereas in foxtail, etc., you know, a little millets, it's only 8.99 or 8.82. Yeah. So you can see that there's a big, 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 uh, benefit in having it because it has a low glycemic index it helps to reduce your blood glucose levels and india is suffering trust me the highest number of diabetics especially with the sedentary vital lifestyle especially with work work from home trust me everybody is just sitting on their butts and that is what is happening so they don't even get even this you know because in wheat and grain uh, wheat and rice you know your iron vitamin iodine vitamin a calcium these also are less predominant whereas compared to millets. So millets is the one and only thing which can help you know, the issue of malnutrition, which every second Indian woman and every third child being malnourished. That is sad and that needs to improve. So Anna, here comes Sri Anna. Okay, so how does it do that? It battles against diabetes. So look at the benefits of it. It helps in diabetics, uh, you know, prevention of diabetes. Whether it's battling it or prevalence of the disease, or pre-diabetics, all that. Apart from that, hypertension, obesity, these are two big causes for death. And mind you, death means what? Death also means loss of productivity for the nation. You know, one more cow less to milk. That's what it is. So anyway, you know, you don't want that apart from the, the human suffering of uh, death, you know, the loss of the family and the emotional trauma which they go through. It's even a bigger loss to the government. So, when you look at it from that angle, you need healthy people, you need people to work, you need people to, you know, consume, to produce. And another thing is why millets suddenly went down is because millets also have one unique thing. They need very little low water. Yeah. The millet is only 350 mm of water, whereas sugar can reach 2100 mm. So you can imagine what sort of water consumption is there. And after when your fields are wet, what do you put after sugarcane? Rice, yeah. because that's only 1,250. So this is how it is. And India has a history of millets. India's millets date back 3,000 before Christ, BCE. And that is how it was. But when the British came, they wanted profitable crops like sugarcane and cotton. And as a result, you know, we moved ahead. As a result, also the Green Revolution in the 1950s focused on rice and wheat. And as a result, you know, Punjab, Haryana and all these states started benefiting from the Green Revolution. But they concentrated only on these two grains, leaving the humble millet aside. The public distribution system of ours, the PDS, also only provides rice and wheat, you know, uh, to lower and marginal income families. So that sort of thing, when you look at it, you know, millet, really the farmers didn't start, uh, you know, 
producing millet and as a result consumption drops so now it's time that you know this also is addressed so guys look at it from this angle why are we looking at shriyana we are looking at shriyana from a very very important point of view and that point of view is simple it is because it not only helps the economy it helps the individual and finally it even helps the planet by saving water by conserving resources so that's the story behind shriyana the politics behind the food and the food behind the politics and this is jagdish ahuja your teacher trainer transformer signing off from one more money talks or with jaggi take care bye bye